I'm overwhelmed. It's true. I'm not lying. It's not for my speech. I'm overwhelmed. I have a million exams that I just did. All last minute, by the way. Got my extensions from the prof, sent a nice big email, you know, oh, I need extra time, something happened, COVID, I don't know. Extensions happened, life happened, stress happened, and I'm overwhelmed. You too are overwhelmed. We all seem to be overwhelmed lately. And now that we're overwhelmed and we're stuck in these stressful situations where we don't feel like we can work all the time, where we feel like we're constantly in cycles of burnout and, and non-burnout, we end up you know, going to our peers and going to our families and, and we ask them for support. You know, We're telling them our issues. I'll text my mom, mom, I have had a big day today. You know, I've had my, my test and my exam and my basketball practice and playing with my best friend Ethan last day or two and then sleeping late, going out, etc. And they always seem to answer the same thing. <laughs> Good luck. You got this. I mean, thanks, but like, no, I don't got this. I, I'm, I'm struggling here. Like, it, it's a big issue. Um, I mean, it's nice. It, it, the thought, it means well. Thanks, Mom. Uh, it means it means well, right? You know, they, they seem to want to help, but in reality, these kinds of messages don't seem to be enough. And when I got one of these messages about a year ago, I started to notice that I too was saying this. I I too was saying this. Um, off track with that alarm. I too was also saying this uh, to my tutor, to the kids that I tutor, because I run a tutoring business. Uh, I don't know if you saw like a little teaser on the Instagram page, but I run a personal tutoring business. I hire tutors. I work with kids myself, and I noticed that you know I'd work with kids and I'd help them with their math problem, uh, and then I would say you know they'd say oh my test tomorrow. I'd say okay you good luck you got this. What else am I going to say? And they wouldn't do well, and I personally you know had issues. I, I was worried. I was like well am I not a good tutor? Like I'm running this whole tutoring business, I can't even get this kid to pass his math test. You know, what's going on? And there seems to be a trend that I'm noticing among the youth. Obviously, there's higher performance standards. This we know. And this, in my opinion, has caused two major uh, issues in the academic circles. First, we have higher achievers are now the norm. It is no longer the case that when I was a kid that I was a higher achiever, it was fun, it was great, and everyone else was kind of just doing school. It is now normal for everyone to be higher achievers. Everyone wants to succeed to the max. Now, what does this also re relate to? It relates to increased academic struggle. And we also see that this increased academic struggle and higher achievers now being the norm has actually caused higher performance standards. And we're in a stuck in a situation where people constantly want to do better, they constantly want to get better on their tests, and then the teachers are constantly getting hard, harder working students and then placing more and more pressure. How do I know this? A small benefit from this is you know, more tutoring for me, which is kind of great. You know, The tutoring business is excelling, it's going up, it's great, but at the same time, it does show a systematic issue. In terms of the impact of overachievement uh, standards, we have the Marianopolis students, the excellers. These kids take this overachievement, they put it on their back, and they work and they do even better than before. I don't know how they do it. I'm an alumni. I'm not in that dark blue category whatsoever. But it's a reality. There's a small number of students, as we all know, that are doing well despite all these pressures. Most people, like everyone in the crowd, basically, goes through cycles of burnout. Cycles where you know you feel great, you feel as though you know life's finally hitting that great moment. You know, finally every goal is getting achieved, every to-do list passed. You feel more confident, your social life's better, and then you burn out and you're stuck in bed eating Ben and Jerry's with Netflix. And you know, all of a sudden you missed a lecture, and then two, and then three, and then you're stuck catching up on all the online lectures, and it's my personal experience. But you experience burnout. Now this red piece, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's a growing piece among young students where they don't have cycles of burnout. They simply stop. They stop to work. And what do I mean by this? They say, I can't statements. I can't succeed and improve. I can't do my work alone, or even worse, I can't do my work at all. And I've actually had situations where I work with kids, and I've seen each of these scenarios separately. 
and they each have their own interesting issues with them and interesting causes. I can't succeed and improve. This student is, is sad. This student feels as though they you know, want to accomplish, they, they feel this overachievement that they want to succeed, and they, and they can't. They'll work as hard as they can, it doesn't work, and all of a sudden they start giving up. There is no cycle of burnout. Students that try to succeed and improve and can't, they all of a sudden just stop working. Parents get a tutor. I give that tutor. Or I'm the tutor. Doesn't really help. I can't do my work alone. These are the students that get a tutor, believe it or not, every single day, two hours a day, seven times a week. And where they cannot do their work unless they have a tutor with them. The worst case, in my opinion, is the I can't do my work at all case. And this is the one that I personally have spent time and money investing into trying to help these students who feel like they cannot work just simply do one math problem on their own without their tutor. Just simply make a to-do list. It, they, they feel the overwhelmness that they feel is nothing that you and I have ever experienced in this younger generation. These I can't statements, what causes them? There seems to be some kind of pattern, from my personal experience at least. Obviously, we have the first two, stress and too much work. Unavoidable, that's life right now. That's the life that we're in, that's the trend that we're going in as a society. The other ones though, if it works. the parental role. Each different I can't student will have a different parental role. The I can't do my work alone, the parents will be all over them. Oh, you need a tutor? I'll give you a tutor. Oh, let me sit with you, do your work. You need this, you need that, you need that, I'll be there for you. And they no longer feel like they can do things alone in their own confidence and their own independence. Students that say, I can't do my work at all, it's a very similar case, but with more extreme. The parent has almost actually, in their own sense, given up. The parent, and I quote, says statements like, my student, my kid, thinks differently than everyone else. My kid just needs extra support. He's not like everyone else. The students that feel like they can't succeed and improve, they get extra parent pressure from the parents. We also have the avoidance strategies. In today's world, it is beyond easy to avoid any issue we have by opening our phone and scrolling through TikTok. There is no going avoiding this. I mean, yes, you can back by way back when read a book, but I mean, how long are you going to read a book for, right? At the end of the day, you've got to get to your work. The technology age has increasingly caused this issue. And the last one is self-perception. Students that say I can't statements across the board feel extreme lack of self-confidence. They do not feel as though they are capable as people. It is no longer about the things that they have to do, it's about who they are. Now, what can we do to solve these? From my experience, as I started working with kids, all of a sudden I started changing my strategies a bit. Instead of spending an hour on math, I'd spend 50 minutes on math, and 10 minutes on, let's talk about you know, your stress for this test. How, how are you feeling? You know, do, you, do you feel like as though you're not smart if you don't succeed on this one test? Do you feel as though your life depends on this one test? Do you feel as though you're even able to do this one test? Needless to say, we have three things. First one, to make these, I like to call them the I can statements. Obviously, the thing that we already know, time management, organization, and study skills. To-do lists, calendars, schedules, I don't know, message on the refrigerator, whatever it is. In a situation where students are overwhelmed, this is the first step we take. Now, regarding parental role and avoidance strategies, there's actually one task that we can do to help both of those. And that is it comes, increasing independence. I start with telling students, hey, whatever the student's name is, what do you feel like you can do today? I make a table with them, and I write, I can do, colon, and they have to write what they feel like they can do today. No pressure, no issues. Simply what they feel they can do. Increasing independence is the key to removing those avoidance strategies, because at the end of the day, People can avoid no matter what pressure you put on them. They'll sit down and twiddle their thumbs for an hour. The last one for self-reception is inspiring confidence. 
Now, what does it mean to inspire confidence? It means to tell a student that they are in themselves a good person and they are in themselves worth of love, of care, despite how they perform. Especially the students with parents that, you know, will not spend the effort on those quality things like, like morals or family connection and they will focus purely on their academic performance. Me telling a student twice, every like two sentences, every time I tutor them, you got this, it's okay if you don't succeed, I'm proud of you no matter what, it changes everything for them. So, now the students are all of a sudden starting to talk better, they're starting to do better. The kid that I used to tutor five hours a week, I tutor him two hours a week. What is the difference in their language? Oh. I can succeed and improve. I can do my work alone. I can do my work at all. I'm able. The theme of this conference is the story of us. And I felt it was valuable to come here and tell you my personal experience with these students. I don't have some big research or some, some study to back anything, but that doesn't mean that there's no truth in the personal connections that we build the people that we encounter in our lives. And I hope that when you hear the other speeches today that you kind of notice that there's a lot of truth in how we feel and empathize and connect with others. I really hope, out of all things, that you take those three suggestions that I gave, inspiring confidence, encouraging independence, and time management and study skills, or whatever skills you need for your profession, and you take those and you can offer suggestions or this advice to those that feel like they're in that burnout cycle because I spoke about the extreme, but that doesn't mean that these three things can't help us who, who feel this sometimes, right? This, I can't sometimes. How can we get out of those cycles of burnout? At the same time though, yes, it's important to uplift others, but I really hope that you take these considerations in for yourself because the first step, in my opinion at least, Helping others is first uplifting yourself. Thank you.